This class is on Vactor Operator Maintenance. Hello, my name is Kerry Alcott. I have created an operator service check sheet that will help the operator keep track of his daily, weekly, and monthly service responsibilities. This check sheet is available to you by emailing me at kerryo at haker.com and let me know what model Vactor you have. I have a check sheet for positive displacement, fan units, or 2103s. Let's start off with daily at the start of the day list. Check water wife strainer filter screen at water tank fill hose. A wife strainer when the water travels through the screen from the inside out catches the debris on the inside of the screen. If the screen is not held tight in the housing, debris could get around the ends of the screen. This screen is damaged from not cleaning. This is the tank filter from the hydrant. Rust scale plugged up the filter and the pressure from the hydrant bent the screen. This is why it's a daily cleaning. The rust scale that was in the screen plugged up the oil cooler. Check water wife strainer filter screen at water pump. To remove the screen, first close the water shutoff valve. Loosen lock nut and clamp bolt. Remove clamp and cap. Remove filter and clean. The screens are made of stainless steel. They do not rust. There is a strap across one end. This is to aid you in removing the screen from the housing. There are on some trucks two sizes but more common is the three inch screen. Rinse debris from the inside of the screen to clean. If the screen is bent or has holes, do not use, replace it. After rinsing the debris out, hold the filter up to light. If light is restricted, water will be restricted. This is due to a calcium buildup. The filters are stainless steel and can be cleaned in any product that will dissolve calcium. LimeAway, CLR, or other brands. This screen was soaked in LimeAway for one hour. To show that the screen can be cleaned, to open the passages in the screen to allow the water to flow better. When putting the screen back together, inspect the cap and gaskets. If they are getting worn, replace them. There are two gaskets needed to seal the water and hold the screen tight in the housing. Outer housing gasket. Inner screen gasket. It takes two. Gaskets to assure the debris stays out of the water pump. Check hydraulic oil level. With all components in travel position, the oil level should be half to three quarter in the bottom sight glass and the top sight glass empty. Hydraulic tank fill cap. Chassis safety pre-trip inspection. Fill out vehicle inspection report. Look for oil, fuel, coolant, and power steering leaks. Inspect suspension for loose mounting or loose broken U-bolts. Check for cracked or broken leaf springs. Look for broken or leaking shock absorbers. Check tire inflation. Check all air tanks for water and drain water if found. Check all fluid levels. Check engine oil level. Low ash oils only. Check transmission fluid. Check coolant level. Check power steering fluid. Check for water in diesel fuel filter and drain. If your chassis is CNG or other alternative fuel source, do not open this filter drain. 
Check blower oil level front and rear. Backside of blower. Top sight glass. Bottom sight glass. Front sight glass. All sight glasses are to have half to three quarter of oil showing in the sight glass. End of day list. Wash out debris body. After dumping the debris body, screens and rear door seal need to be cleaned. Drain and wash out cyclones. Wash out boom. Cleaning the boom to remove debris that will get between the tubes of the telescopic boom. Place a restriction on the end of the vacuum hose. Start the blower and at proper engine RPMs, close the relief valve to increase suction. Using your handgun, shoot the water at the boom seal while extending and retracting the boom. Drain micro strainer. Open micro strainer and inspect. For debris and water. Remove strainer screen and wash on the ground. If there is water behind the strainer screen mounting plate, drain water by removing the inner plug on the bottom of the strainer housing. If water found, Remove plug on silencer. Run blower. Until all moisture is gone. Wash out body pump off system. To do this, use the body flush out system to put water in the debris body. Put enough water in the debris body for the pump off system to pick up the water and flush out the system outlet. This only needs to be done if the pump off system was used. Once a week checklist. Flush water pump. The 2100 plus water pump is mounted on the right side of the vector. The pump flush valves are standard. To flush the pump, open these two valves and close all other valves. Turn the water pump on and allow water to push out each valve. Turn water pump off and open any ball valve, then close the pump flush valves. Once a month checklist. Inspect handgun or guns for damage. Do not operate a handgun that is cracked, leaking, or has sticking trigger. Check the relief valve for proper pressure setting. When not pulling the trigger on the handgun, you should see 600 pounds of water pressure at engine idle with the multi-flow turned about halfway up. If you don't see that pressure, your relief valve is bad. Inspect and rotate vacuum suction hose. If you use your vector in applications other than sewer, like storm drain cleaning or hydro excavation, where you vacuum abrasives, Rotating the suction hose will give you longer life to the hose. Grease all drive shafts. Universal joint lubrication points. On units that use a transfer gear case or a split shaft PTO. The drive shaft U joints are the often ones that don't get lubed properly. You have to go under the unit in order to get to them. There are three fittings on every drive shaft, one slip joint and two universal joints. The shafts are the drive shaft from the transmission, drive shaft to the blower, drive shaft to the differential, and two PTO drive shafts. Check transfer gearbox fluid level. Grease hose reel turntable bearing. Turntable bearings are used to allow the hoses and wiring to go up the middle of the bearing and still let the component attached to it rotate. 
These bearings are used on man lifts and cranes. We use them on combo units for rotating the hose reels. And on booms, the center is airflow passage. Hose reel turntable bearing loop fittings. Proper way is to rotate the hose reel one direction until it stops. Pump grease in the proper two grease fittings for the bearing. Then as you move the hose reel, pump grease in all the way around until the opposite stop. Hose reel locks. Lube fittings. Two pumps of grease each. Grease hose reel pillow block bearings. Two pumps of grease each side of hose reel. Grease pitch roller. Two grease fittings. Two pumps of grease each. Grease debris body hinges. Left and right side, two pumps of grease each. Grease debris body rear door locks. If you have a remote grease manifold, recommended two pumps of grease for each fitting. Remember to use a hand grease gun so you don't overpressure the plastic tubing and burst a line. If you don't have a grease manifold, you need to grease the following. Boom swivel bearing. Boom swing cylinders. Boom lift cylinder. Debris body hoist cylinder. Body fill indicator. Pump off system if equipped. If you have an auto level wine, lubrication points. One on the bottom of the hose reel roller or guide block. One fitting on each end of the auto wine shaft end plate. Second fitting on the shaft end plate. One on the back side of the hose roller guide block. One fitting on the handle. This handle is how you adjust the hose roller to align with the wrap of the hose on the reel, called timing the hose. Hose reel extends slide. Each side has a place for a grease fitting on top. If your truck has a plug, you should replace with a grease fitting. Grease the bottom on each side. Check the lower bushing thickness and compare it to the top bushing. Have the lower bushing replaced when half the thickness of the top bushing. Have the inner bushings replaced as well. Thank you and please drive safe and watch for hazards ahead of you.